I do also agree with a lot of what Mr. Borlumis was saying as well. Um, so let, 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 let me take you through what, what I was hoping to cover today. We were asked to talk a little bit about um, our views on regulation across Europe. And we're going to focus primarily in Romania because that, that's where we are and what today's all about. And we certainly see this as a country where it's reached a stage of having the solid foundations. It's got a, a vibrant and growing economy, growing quickly, with a great prospect for the future. And I think our sector has to be able to play its part in that. Basically, what I'm going to be saying is that the mobile industry has actually contributed greatly to economic development. And we believe, and I think this aligns with the regulator on this point, that providing access to all people will actually be a further great benefit and continue to boost the economy. Generally, we see that in more developed markets, I mean, increased access today, what really matters is increased access to fast web access. But we will also want to see this balanced with a reasonable cash return for the investment that the industry makes, including the risks that it takes. The delivery of services are done in a country with the costs of that country, and certainly when we start to look at what regulatory regime should be going forward, we believe strongly that we have to recognize that in the country, it's the cost of the country that, that, that needs to be considered. And the environment and the requirements of the markets are substantially different based on whether it's the, the history or the current cost base um, in the country. So all we would ask is that these things are recognized. Okay, so how does that play in Romania? Well, there we are. I think, I, again, I want to step back a little bit and think of some of the, the aspects that drive our thinking on this. There was an EU-wide survey by Ovum that showed that the mobile industry is contributing about 1.1% to GDP um, across Europe. It's always a bit higher in emerging economies, and I came from a market, um, in fact, one based in Africa, where mobile is accounting for nearly 5% of GDP. What we have also seen is that studies in emerging markets is that as mobile first comes in and it's voice communication, every 10% increase of mobile penetration adds 1% to GDP. Today, in more developed markets here in Europe, what we're actually seeing, I believe, I have no data to prove it, I believe it passionately to be right, but actually, it is the increased access to fast, to broadband and fast web access that is actually going to continue to drive the economies. So, um, we see very much that the key driver for economic development and social equality, which is critical, is this fast access to the web. And we see the mobile industry as being the key way to do it, in particular, when you have a community spread into rural areas. When we then start to look at regulation, um, I think that there is some enthusiasm, and we will no doubt hear it from Brussels today, um, for incre increased centralization of regulation. But we believe passionately, again, that the differences in countries based on both their histories and the legacies of what are in place are absolutely critical, and this needs to be taken into account. In particular, the history of license structures and how those are paid for. The business model in different countries. I mean, let, let's recognize the mobile industry has two fundamental models that operates. Either big handset subsidies and relatively high um, uh, telephone charges, or no handset subsidies and much lower charges. And different countries have different variations of this along a scale. You cannot possibly head towards common termination rates across Europe where you've got such big differences in the business models that exist. You also need to take into account the maturity of each of the markets. I mean, as our industry matures, people tend to use mobile phones more. As the phones get used more, we get efficiencies and you will see the prices come down. I mean, this is an industry where we have seen increased competition actually driving prices down over a long period of time. I'm clearly talking here about great enthusiasm for you know, great freedom for the operators. You would expect that. But we do not totally object to regulators. We believe regulators do have a place. Um, in fact, re regulators can do good. But we believe that they should be primarily <coughs> protecting customers from unreasonable behavior or actions in the industry. Be that wrong pricing, 
or in fact, should that be not developing services faster? And in this, we actually agree with a lot of what Mr. Georgescu was saying. But the industry must be encouraged to invest in these new services. And Mr. Volumus made the point that industry has to be rewarded for taking risks. Without question, there are risks in the new services that we actually introduce going forward. As an industry, we do compete on coverage, we compete on new product innovations, and we compete on price. And I think the evidence of that is actually seen in Romania. In point of fact, I would like to quote that our operators already charge tariffs below the European average. I am, if you'll forgive me, Mr. President, quoting you, Mr. Georgescu. Um, you know, we, we have seen competition come in in Romania, and we are seeing you know, prices at a good rate compared to much of Europe. So, despite this pressure on prices, this year we have introduced fast broadband access. We have actually now got 500,000 3G users by October in the country. An investment is needed to deliver more broadband services. We have introduced, within this last year, 100 telecenters, which is actually access to um, te uh, telephone services in the rural communities. So in the areas where people are, are less able to afford telephony services, we've started to introduce those sorts of services. Today we employ around 3,000 people in the company. However, there's about 15,000 people indirectly employed when you start to take account of our supplier and distribution network. And our competitors in the marketplace will be able to say the same. This industry is important to the country. We have already invested around 1.5 billion euros in, a, in this country. We're not a country, we're only a company. And we're now starting to talk about amounts of money that is actually helping to create infrastructure in the country. And in that, what we're looking for is a fair cash return. I think in saying fair cash return, I would merely ask that when the regulator looks at his model going forward, you actually look at the totality of the picture, because companies that make profit reinvest in their capital expenditure. The capital expenditure is the single largest cost for us in the way we operate the business. So we would ask that it is critical that the whole picture is looked at when the regulator is looking at business models going forward. Which is why it brings me neatly on to interconnect rates. We are targeting towards the lowest interconnect rates in Europe. And this I see as a major challenge in this country when we want to actually get out and expand the network into areas either by bringing in 3G, by bringing in 3G and its related services, many of which fail. We do not know what's going to fail, but we're prepared to do it because we need an adequate, if we get an adequate return overall. And we want to take coverage and access out to people who are what we would think of as the marginal consumers in this country. And these are the people who are in the harder to access areas where, quite frankly, building the network, our largest cost, actually proves to be uneconomic unless you look at it in the round as a whole. So all of these factors need to be taken into account. And in particular, I think when we look at interconnect rates, it's absolutely critical that if you, you Mr. Jesu, and the regulator want to actually see more coming in of 3G and better broadband services, the model that you use for assessing the costs in the industry have to take into account 3G, where the model today is currently only looking at 2G services, which are becoming much more fully utilized. So we have to take account going forward on the risk factors. And when it comes to regulation, let's make sure that it is looked at within the country, let's make sure that all the factors are taken into account, allow for these differences across all of the different European territories. So we would ask only that the regulatory regime recognises that. And with that, thank you all for listening.